that mode. Thanks for coming. I'm Michael Ruskin and I will talk about QueryFS, a tool for integrating with Unix from Common Lisp using file system APIs. I think I should start with a small disclaimer. I know that many people in the Lisp community are kind of Lisp purists, they like Lisp family languages and try to use them exclusively as much as possible, they try to implement everything or use the implementations in Lisp, avoiding any reliance on the foreign, so to say, code, or in other words, code in other languages and they like many of the single image ideas and dislike many of the Unix ideas often. Well, I'm not a Lisp purist by any measure. I actually like some of the Unix ideas and many of the Unix ideas. I guess I'm not a true common Lisp programmer in the sense that common Lisp is not an attribute which would uh, describe my entirety as a programmer. I'm a programmer who uses common Lisp for some tasks and likes it for these tasks and values many of its properties but also prefers other languages in different contexts. I do not even use Emacs. I build my environment in another way one could say a more Unix-like way. And if you prefer to coordinate your environment based on Emacs, then probably QueryFS is not something which could ever be interesting to you. It is for Unix-style integration of Unix-first uh, programs. I sometimes prefer even non-expression-based syntax. Worse, I like Bash as a language for some tasks and I like plain structured query language for some tasks. QueryFS is a virtual POSIX file system implemented using Fuse. And I use Common Lisp as a great tool, but not as something which defines every choice I make. I should probably also say that QueryFS reflects what I wanted to use and how I wanted to use it and what I ended up using and how I ended up using it, but I am happy to extend it and maybe modify it if you have a use case. Feel free and even feel welcome to get in touch. So as an overview, what QueryFS is? Well, QueryFS is a virtual file system, so it is a file layout created by code on the fly. And query, why query? Queries are provided in pluggable DSLs, so a single instance of QueryFS contains and runs queries written in different DSLs. And the ideas behind these DSLs is that one way or another you have a list data structure presented as a directory, or, in my main use case, an SQL select as a directory. What are the goals of QueryFS? Uh, first of all, I wanted to integrate it with everything that speaks POSIX file system API. So, in other words, just everything. Well, or maybe almost everything. Because, you know, storage is a soft task nowadays in the sense that there are a lot of file systems providing different trade-offs which will uh, take your files and put them under some names and give the files back to you when you need them. And you can pick any of them and most of the programs won't even notice you have changed your choice. For more interesting integrations is not always as easy so for those that could in principle be represented on the file system level, I wanted just to use file system level to be able to use file system level. I wanted my file system to provide either content or symbolic links to content because modern file systems are very good at giving you access to stored content and, you know, I didn't want to optimize everything to push large files in the cases where I could just provide a symlink and let the file systems do the hardware. I wanted to represent uh, queries to databases, mainly to SQL databases, easily. 
In fact, a large part of my motivation uh, to do the entire QDFS project was the fact that I had experience using RealFS, a uh, relational file system in OCaml, and I liked it, and I extended it after finding it, but then I hit the wall where it was kind of hard to extend it to do exactly what I wanted, and I decided, you know, to write my own. And if I committed to doing a significant chunk of work of making few common Lisp work with Fuse nicely, then of course I wanted flexibility. I wanted flexibility to add vaguely query-like things to be sure that I can always add something. I didn't end up using it as much as I expected, to be honest, but still it is sometimes useful and sometimes calming to have this ability if needed. And also that means that if you have a use case not covered at all but what I am doing now with QueryFS, it's probably not too hard to add it on the plugin level. So we can do a little demo. Of course, as QueryFS works with Fuse, we need some Fuse libraries and utilities available. And uh, we also need PostgreSQL for the database part, available and configured and with access. And of course we need some QuickLisp stuff. And of course I uh, use QueryFS checkout instead of QuickLisp version, just because uh, uh, preparing the demo led me to do some small uh, changes useful for the demo. And uh, yeah, and then you just need uh, SBCL. Uh, and then in the SBCL, uh, of course, you, you also need to install to load QueryFS and install its dependencies, and then ESRAPPEC, which is used by some plugins for the parsing, and then CLSQL, PostgreSQL for the database part. Okay. Now we can actually do runfs. So we say queryfs runfs with the target directory queryfs test. Something happens. And now we see that there is now directory queryfs test, but, and the results inside, but they're empty, which is not actually surprising as there are no queries to represent. And now we can Actually, but we can at least check that there is indeed a uh, file system mounted on this directory, but that's it. And now we can just unmount it. And as you can see, we have uh, unmounted, and therefore the query fast has terminated. It always terminates the running image when the file system un is unmounted. For various reasons, it's just safer to do like that when you interact with use. So now let's actually create some queries so that we have something to represent. Uh, we create queries and now we edit something like that. And sorry, I will just uh, I will probably just copy, of course. Uh, so we have we can create, for example, a file in the following way. We just write the file name, and then we say that we also write the What should be in this file name? Oops. And actually, that's it. We can now say quick list, quick lot, run FS. So now there are results. Short talk, there is described this dir. 
which doesn't have the finishing end of line. And so, yeah, we see what happens. Okay, now before we go further, I will probably do a trick which will be completely magic and unclear right now. And it will actually be still unclear in the end, even though I will talk a bit more about it. Namely, I will create a query which allows me updating the queries without actually restarting QueryFS. So now I can again do this, and again do this, and again do this. And now there is one more result. There is this reload thing. And yes, I can now just write to it. And it reloads all the queries. Why do I want it? Because now I go to short doc and show that I cannot just uh, create a file like that. I can always create a directory like that. And now I say f minus n query fs test result reload reload and now my query is probably reloaded so in results we still have short doc in short doc we now have what is used and in what is used we have fuse which we can cut and see indeed file system in the user space. But of course, just a constant uh, uh, query which never computes anything is kind of useless and definitely underwhelming. So let's do something which actually does some work. Uh, for example, let's add together some numbers. So it is actually, this query will actually be a normal, almost normal Lisp code, and in the end it just needs to re return a, a hierarchical structure, creating the, uh, the, the 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 file layout. Of course, uh, you you know that uh, well. I, I could have used an imper imperative creation, but mcap file here is creating an entry of hierarchical structure, it's not imperative. So this def parameter, in a sense, it doesn't mean anything, uh, uh, as long as it is not used by l l further code. Okay. So, so far so good, we have just created a static file in another way. There is only readme and uh, we, there is a promise what we are going to do. Uh, so, what we are going to do? Well, we are going to add uh, some actual content. And therefore, the last, uh, ret the last form should return a value which is actually hierarchical. Uh, so we will use this mcasplice thing to say that mk file is not everything we want. And then we will do mk per generator, which will actually allow us to do generated entries. mk per generator has, well, this argument to declare what is the variable for the enumerated things, and then it has two parts. It has the part which uh, creates the pairs, so we have this define and we do a loop, 
And then uh, we need to collect something uh, which is actually uh, some which has to be a list. Uh, every list has to have the first element be a string, and this string will be the name of the file system entry we collect here. And this remaining part of the list can be anything, uh, because, well, because it is just Lisp data which will be used maybe for creating the content, maybe for uh, immediately, maybe for some deeper level. And, for example, uh, you can now say what is the content we want inside. We want to have some directories. As I said, the first element is the string and it must be the uh, name of the entry. And then we say that the content is just enumerated normally inside this entry. But, well, we have already written quite a bit, so we can just close everything and reload and see what happens. So now we don't have just readme, we now additionally have these numbers and each number is actually a directory which doesn't contain anything. Why it doesn't contain anything? It doesn't contain anything yet because we haven't edited it yet. So what we want inside? We want inside a KN MKPR generator, of course with a new variable, and of course it again loops over the same range, and then we say that it again collects something which has a list starting with the name K, but the content this time will be different. It will not be just K, it will be the sum of K and the second uh, uh, element, value in the list X. So, in other words, uh, here we have the sum as the meaningful content. And now what we do? We, do, we will create a file this time, which uses first OI, and the content will be just the text representation of the number. So, we reload, and now this entry has actual content, which is some file. And guess what is in the file? Of course it is 10. It is the sum of the numbers which was computed here in when generating the pairs and converted to the string here when creating the file. Uh, let's go further. Let's uh, see that we have a playground for uh, PostgreSQL. And indeed we have a database and we have a test table with name and content as columns. And now let's create, let's echo the password somewhere. I hope you didn't expect it would be something complicated. And we can create now a query. Which will be, which will do something with database. And this time I will use a special syntax, uh, which I call SQL2, because it is the first, the second, not the first attempt to create a syntax for SQL work. And now here we start by just declaring what is the database we care about. And then we say that our super secure password needs to be read from a file, uh, which, oops, just that, uh, which doesn't make much sense in our case, of course, but uh, at least uh, 
In general, you could want to manage secrets in some reasonable way. So now let's re reload. And now we have a DB query. But we just configure, we haven't actually added something which would uh, add, uh, like run any SQL, actual SQL. So we don't have any real queries, just the declaration that there will be something. So let's mkdir all. As I said, this syntax for various reasons is kind of closer to bash than to lisp. Of course, you could just run all the SQL work in the common Lisp based, as expression based syntax if you prefer, but I want to show that I, defining DSLs from scratch also works fine. And now I say what should be in the directory. I want to run a query, select name content from test table, and iterate it. And iterate it in such a way that every entry will be, uh, like every entry in the result set will correspond to one file, and again the first element is actually the uh, file name, and this is mandatory. And so I say with file name, I edit this abbreviation not to keep track of what happens with every single uh, entry so that I, c I know the name already so I can just use it and I say that on red I will get the first element of the, uh, the elements number one zero based so it's elt not first so the second element in the human terms if I read and I can also write so on write data we have some code to run. We need to update the test table. And to update it how we set a content equals to data where name is name. Yeah. But this is on right. Uh, this is for writing into uh, this is for writing into existing files, and also we say that we want to be able to create new files, and this is done outside the for because for is the generator, and now we have a property of the directory that we also know how to create files, so we say on create file with name name, we again run some SQL. And what we insert? Obviously we insert name, which is which has the known value. So, so we now reload. And can actually look what is there in results database. So there is all, and there is nothing in all. But we can, of course, add something to some file, and something else to some other file. And now we can query results db all. We can get data back. So we have one to three and one to have two, one to three for five. And again, we don't have anything extra. Uh, this is not all what we can do. Now we can add files, but we cannot actually. What happens if we add a file we don't want? Ah, it doesn't have a nice name. We could want to rename it. Uh, to, uh, to remove it, but unfortunately we can't. Permission is denied. Uh, it's actually unimplemented, so it says that if I don't know how to, then probably nobody is allowed to. So, we need to add a handler to our file and to say that when we try to remove the file, uh, the, the query is of course delete, 
and it of course shouldn't delete everything it should only delete the correspondent file so now if we reload and we look at our directory and we see the file which makes us sad we can remove we can now remove it so you see you can in do anything uh, and e relatively easily but we can go even further in a sense this reminds of the old times old PTP times because nowadays if you want to spread spam and you want to create a website which pretends to have a page with every possible uh, name or address and uh, is findable by every possible uh, search query well first of all you're a bad person uh, but second you do need to feed the search engine all the pages you pretend to have but in the old days uh, when you used peer-to-peer -peer networks for files it was slightly different uh, you uh, your query was shown to peers so it was possible for a node to pretend it has everything and to only start pretending it has a specific file once you actually request it so let's do a silly query which demonstrates it what it will be it will be well it will be again an enumeration of some select but we will use the fact that sometimes the file operation know what is the file they are requesting of course when you do a less you just need to enumerate but when you do cut you actually know what is the file asked for and actually you can well how would you access it it is the zero value of the list x so you actually can ask for the zero value of the list x inside the query which is supposed to generate x well to generate the list of x's and it will be null if you are well it will be null if you are listing and it will be string if you are answering a query about a specific file so we say yep uh, indeed we have a x there and then we say but yeah we say that it should not be null because we should do not want to list anything we definitely do not want to list a file with null name and we definitely and we don't actually want to list anything when we are doing a less instead of uh, cut and here we will have some files oops sorry yes now we can reload okay now we have something silly and it doesn't have anything well it has the formal entries that should exist there and but if we look at some file that indeed we do have code here so you can do these silly tricks and use this on the fly uh, to uh, return the listing dependent on what you are looking for and this makes some sense from performance point of view because if you are navigating some catalog and it takes a query to uh, know what is the list of categories once you're inside the category you don't want to rerun the query you just want to ask for the specific uh, category preferably checking that it actually exists and actually this trick works with we have everything trick works in every syntax well of course not truly in every syntax because in the static shot door sex we don't even have a place where we could add this trick but for example we can do well a simpler trick let's say one plus cl instead of 
uh, some cell and we can put there something like that so you see what happens when we are asked oops sorry when we are asked about something we first try to parse the file name and see if it is an integer if it is an integer then we just say oh, okay we have the file with this name and the next integer inside and otherwise we just uh, list uh, the, from 1 to 10 and add, add 1 and this is the pairs we enumerate well and inside we need to create some file and we create the file with the obligatory first x as the name and we format the number for the second name and so we reload and if we look at query fast test results 1 plus we have from 1 to 10 and we have 9 if we ask for 9 we have 10 but we can ask for 99 which is not listed in ls but it, it, it is still generated if we ask for that on the other hand, if we just put something which is definitely not an integer, we still get no such file or directory. Because here we would get error, an error while parsing, so it's not a good idea, and we would get the list from 1 to 10, which doesn't contain our 99 bottles on the wall. So, how QueryFS is structured? On the bottom level, there is CL Fuse. CFFI bindings for Fuse directly using Fuse low level APIs. Uh, there is also a slightly lispy wrapper on top of these CFFI bindings. The next level is CL Fuse MetaFS. While CL Fuse requires you to define callbacks, uh, CLFuse MetaFS allows you to produce some list-based layout format instead. And of course there are macros to define these layouts with slightly less boilerplate. Uh, these are actually the macros you have seen in our some numbers query before. What I guess is missing, because I never had any use for it, but I could easily add it if anyone is actually interested, is a CLOS based object style API for defining these callbacks via methods. And the next level is QueryFS. Uh, QueryFS is a slightly complicated thing where you define plugins or use the standard one to parse queries then for each query plugin outputs some Lisp code which is normally CLFuse MetaFS layout descriptions and then these Lisp code pieces get combined into a complete file system definition composed of all the translated queries and then this composed definition is actually used and if you really want, you can even update the queries while FS is mounted without, uh, you know, bothering the other queries existing in parallel. In general, a query FS file system has the following lifecycle. First, find and load plugins. And each plugin can register one or more parsers for some query file extensions. For parsing, current plugins either use Lisp Reader or use some parser expression grammar defined parsers. Parsing a query always returns some Lisp code. The next step is to find and actually translate the queries, and then you build a combined definition out of the translated queries and, well, run it as a file system. It is perfectly possible for code uh, obtained from some query to update the definition on the fly while processing a file. 
Hopefully it was a special file intended as a control interface and not just a random file, you know, but anyway. And then once we are unmounted, we exit. And here's a diagram to show what is the fate of a query FS request. At some point the corresponding query was found by CLFUSE query FS and sent to a plugin which produced some top level query code and reported the results to QueryFS core. So now we are actually ready to start interacting with the kernel via Fuse. And some point a client program wanted to read the QueryFS query AB and asked kernel via the file system code for this path. Fuse, in step by step, asks CLFuse queryfs for slash query, slash query, slash a, slash query, slash a, slash b. CLFuse sees the slash query part and understands that this should be handled by this query. In the next step, the QueryFS core receives from the kernel the request for slash query slash a, which should be uh, handled by the query. And then it asks the top level query code what is slash a. A top level query code creates a query code function for slash a and reports it to the QueryFS core. So the query code for slash a gets asked about further path component b and it produces query code for a b and says that the a is a file and query code for slash a slash b is asked to report its content so it returns the contents to query fs and it passes it to fuse uh, and then Fuse passes it to the client program. So from the point of view of client program, it looks for the file slash query fs slash query slash a slash b and got back some content. So let me return to this silly trick with the uh, listing of the files depending of what file you are looking for. Of course, this interface looks slightly counterintuitive, and it was a trade-off where I didn't go for the purest or cleanest solution, but for a more convenient one. Naturally, lookup and enumeration end up being quite similar code-wise. And also, of course, we do not want to do full listing every time, because full listing can be very expensive. On the other hand, listing and enumeration are pretty similar, so if we implement them completely independently, it is a bit of code duplication. And so I decided eventually to combine enumeration and lookup in some of the interfaces. In other words, if you get a string, it means we are doing a lookup and you know what is the name which matters. If you get nil, uh, then you should just list everything. And CLFuse MetaFS AP pro does provide APIs and macros which support completely separate lookup and enumeration, but for simple cases this combined lookup slash enumeration turns out to be pretty convenient. Of course it is not as clean a solution, but on the other hand it provides simpler queries and simpler queries also matter. And as you have seen, it also allows us to handle the query entries that we didn't enumerate when we were asked to enumerate all the content. As I have mentioned, uh, most of the plugins use parser expression grammars for parsing. This is implementing using ESRAP path which is a front-end for ESRAP. So there is an abstract grammar in a separate file, like stuff like that. 
And then there is some pattern matching to process the raw abstract syntax tree after parsing and produce the Lisp code we need. Some remarks on integrating via file system API and also on integrating specifically via views. On the file system API, naturally, you want to decide whether or when file names must be valid UTF-8 because that's the most natural encoding for the file names nowadays. And in some cases, you might even want the file content to also be valid UTF-8. This, of course, depends on what exactly your queries represent. With use, there are multiple interesting observations. Well, first of all, the simple way to use views is kind of a framework in the sense that you call their main function basically instead of your own main function if we are talking C. And this framework makes some interesting assumptions about threads. And as you can guess, if you have use managed threads and you have callbacks across the FFI boundary and you have garbage collection, all three together, well, not good. Here, a lot of inspiration could be drawn from Erlang and Haskell fuse bindings, because these are also garbage collected languages. They also don't like the libfuse assumptions about threading, and so they also have to use lower level APIs. One step below, you get actual functions instead of this whole framework, and you still have a, lo a lot of callbacks. But fortunately, as long as you manage threads from the Lisp side, it works fine with CFFI with all these callbacks. Well, at least on SBCL where I use it, but at some point I tested it on other implementations and it generally works fine as long as 64-bit integers and callbacks and stuff like that is implemented on the platform. But when I say that it works fine, it still doesn't mean that you can do crazy stuff like mount multiple file systems from the same list process. You probably still do want to exit once the file system is unmounted. It's just that, well, I didn't try to implement my own fuse protocol parser, even though it would probably be possible. And thus, I still uh, suffer from some of the fuse assumptions. And basically, if you write a fuse file system and you want to not be finishing your program once the file system finishes to work, well, you need to be much more careful than I was willing to. And there is also a fun story that LibFuse saw uses symbol versioning which is kind of hard and annoying to handle with of CFFI and so I ended up implementing a one function chat library with like one line of code in the only function uh, just so that this function is compiled and linked by the GCC toolchain and GCC and the GNU binutils and all that and so it can use the symbol versioning without any effort and then this uh, library re-exports the function under a different name but without any symbol versioning. That, by the way, why QueryFS requires the presence of uh, GCC and the development headers of views to run. Maybe some of you are interested how I ended up using QueryFS, both from the point of view of use cases and user experience, and from the point of view of the future of QueryFS, will I fix it if it breaks? To be honest, it didn't end up exactly as I expected. But anyway, email. I eat my scripts download the email and index it, storing the index of the emails in the database. And then I read the email in Veeam using QueryFS as a part of the toolchain.
planetlisp.org and many, many other web feeds. Well, I download it in, via a toolchain that mostly uses Fertful Theridion, but sometimes uses marionetted, isolated Firefox. And then after downloading, I index it in the database and then read in my editor using QueryFS. Password Manager actually very, very similar. I store the passwords encrypted with the master key in the database and access them via QueryFS. It's all probably is not a very good idea and I wouldn't recommend anyone to do it uh, but I guess it's better than not using a password manager at all and now I have too many scripts to migrate to something cleaner and more secure. Uh, tagging and uh, later searching are just the random files I have. I have implemented it, actually multiple possible ways to implement it exist and all loaded in my typical QueryFS system, but I ended up not using it at all, so I cannot tell you how tagging works or doesn't work. Uh, well, and the reason I don't use it are purely idiosyncratic, I just found out that it's easier for me to maintain a single hierarchy where I put various stuff and then to check the two or three possible places I could have put a file then to actually assign any useful text or to search via automatically assigned text. But if you want to have some tagging support and that is there and if you want to run SQL queries on top of that, it's also easy. That's all. Thank you all for your attention. Normally, I should ask, are there any questions, I guess, but I hope that by now there is already a lively discussion in the stream chat, but at the moment of the recording, I cannot verify it, so I can just hope. Thanks again. Bye.